Since we went over this, we've been in Acts chapter 16. If you turn with me to Acts chapter 16. Yeah, I believe it's been at least maybe three weeks. But we are on Acts chapter 16, verse 16. We were speaking about the spirit of Leviathan. Yes, that's right. Which has seven generals, seven top demon spirits that try to actually mimic and portray the Holy Spirit's gifts and tries to be a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. And as we read the scriptures, we see this all through the scriptures where he uh, he tries. But those who have discernment like Paul here to see what spirit this is of, even though the girl in this text is telling the truth. Is everybody there? <clears throat> And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. Now in the Greek it says python. A spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew <clears throat> them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to perceive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. If you'll bow your heads, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, and open up your word tonight. Help give us understanding by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lead us and guide us into all truth. We just thank you for your magnificence, your everlasting mercy. Your tender mercies, your compassion, and your love that you show us. We thank you, dear Lord, for being so patient with us and teaching us. We thank you, Lord, for covering our homes, our children, and those family members we've been praying for, and those outside the church we're praying for salvation. We know that you're working, always working. And we thank you for this, Lord. I pray help me and all of us to decrease and you increase in here tonight. And may your word be glorified in you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. 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 Last time we was on this, like I said two or three weeks ago, we spoke about how in Macedonia, this uh, spirit of Python, or spirit of divination, actually was controlling this whole area. You see, when the masters saw that their hope in gains was gone, so where were they putting their hope in? They were putting their hope in this demonic spirit of divination. Isn't that amazing? You can, you can catch a whole lot by watching the scriptures and reading real slow. And you'll see many things, many mysteries in the scriptures if you'll let the Lord show you. And we see that uh, Paul turned around after many days of this. And it wasn't right away. He, many days, he, he listened to this and he discerned what this was. Because, not that he might not, he might have been new to this spirit is actually what it was doing. But she was actually saying the truth. You know, this spirit will use the truth. This spirit will use the truth and sets itself up in churches everywhere. This spirit also has a big influence over the media, over the entertainment industry, over uh, the medical field, medical science, and pharmaceuticals. You'll find that in pharmakia, which is in the Greek, means sorcery, spirit of divination, which you'll find in Deuteronomy chapter 18, that they were not supposed to partake in. Many things this spirit has control over and has dominion over that has to be broken. But in our culture today, we're just like ancient Greece here. It has a big stronghold in our culture today. The spirit of Python and the spirit of divination. What it does is it seeks to put the vision out for the child of God. It seeks to squeeze like a python does, how a python wraps around. Just like it does in the physical, it does the same thing in the spiritual. and seeks to just cut off your dreams, your hopes, and your visions. But then it releases because a python doesn't like to eat dead prey. It likes for the heart to be beating and its prey to be warm. So that's why you see certain things happening in certain families, uh, cities, churches. You'll see uh, a, a growth spurt, and then you'll see a decline. 
you'll see something going going to be in great numbers or doing great and then doing bad. Just like up and down, up and down. It tries to wrap around and squeeze and release, squeeze and release. That's what it chooses to do. But we see here that Paul recognized this thing, even though it was coming out with some truth. This is what we must do in our day. No matter even if this thing is coming from the pulpit or if it's speaking through people over TV, it is time to discern good and evil. And what the difference is. This thing had been operating for hundreds of years in Macedonia. Matter of fact, the most popular, uh, I believe, instance of this thing was the Oracles of Delphi. And the Oracles of Delphi, way back in the days of Alexander the Great, they had uh, dominion and had great, the leaders would go and get information from these spirits. They would run their nation or their city <clears> through these things. These things would prophesy to them, give them some type of dark wisdom, and give them prophecies. These women would work themselves up into a, a frizzy, you know. No, I mean, they were actually sitting on a fault line where the temple was in Delphi because there's like two or three faults through there. Methane gas would come up through the temple, and they'd get high on methane gas using what? Again, a type of pharmacia to actually get high on and then the people would come in and they would prophesy to them. One of the great, uh, Alexander the Great was one of the great generals that went in and received information from one of these oracles, the same spirit that's been operating here. So Paul goes into this situation and has to believe by the Holy Spirit to call this thing out. And quite naturally, when these things are revealed and when they're called out, people get angry. They get mad. And it happens the same way in the church. <laughs> When these things are revealed, even in our own lives, sometimes we don't like it. We can read that word and the Lord reveals something to us about we've been influenced by a certain spirit or whatever, and we're like, ooh, if we're not humble, we get aggravated. Don't mean you're possessed, but it does mean you may be influenced, honestly. And a lot of times we're influenced by leaven, by things coming forth, doctrines coming forth. Many people have a problem with this thing that is suffocating them even now. Do you know that the spirit of Python can suffocate you spiritually so much so to where it starts affecting you physically? Literally, there are signs that show that you've been affected by Python even in the physical, whether it be stress in the back, muscle aches, neck aches, sometimes headaches, because what affects you spiritually is going to affect you physically because the spirit of the mind is the governor of the body. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not every time, but a lot of times it's true. When this thing wraps a hold of, gets a hold of somebody in years of assault, it will just take the body down. Hold your finger in, in the book of Acts and go with me to Luke chapter 13. Because Python, like we said three weeks ago, is the twin sister of the spirit of infirmity. 